Good evening, welcome to Notepad. I am Hafiz Marzuki and tonight is a special episode as we will be discussing about social entrepreneurship. And to be uh, more precise, uh, we'll be talking to the uh, founder of Native, a social enterprise, uh, Daniel Teo, who is also the recipient of Singapore International Foundation Young Social Entrepreneurs YSE 2019, which comes with it 20,000 Singapore dollars. Am I right, Daniel? Yeah, Thanks correct. for being with us tonight. So, first of all, of course, uh, we all know about social entrepreneurship. In Malaysia, it's quite a thriving uh, community. But I want to know more about the work that Native does. Could you probably explain to us? Sure. Um, first and foremost, thank you for having me here with you today. Uh, so, Native is a social enterprise that co-creates community-based tourism ventures with local communities, predominantly the Orang Asli in Peninsula, Malaysia. So, we do that with the idea of being able to boost livelihoods and also preserve culture as we go, where we work with the local community to provide immersive experiences for travelers and also companies and other programs that might be looking for this kind of experience. I see. So how, how did you come up with the idea? Maybe you can tell us a bit about your background and how did you come up with the idea of starting Native? Sure. So I think um, Native was really born about a year ago, but there's a lot of history that goes into it. So I think it begins when I was towards the final years in university, okay. where I was starting to explore outside of my field. So I studied civil engineering, Wow! but that wasn't something that I pictured myself doing for the long run. I see. Yeah. So that led me to explore, where I discovered this organization called EPIC which at the time was working with Orang Asi communities to build homes uh, for the people who might need them. Okay. So that led me to become a volunteer and through a series of events, I eventually found myself in an Orang Asi community close by to my university. Okay. And that was the start of uh, building a relationship with them. And I feel like my interaction with them really helped me grow as an individual. It pushed me out of my bubble. And I also I learned a lot about this um, community that I only ever hear about. It I, gives you a new perspective on, on life, I yeah, would say. Yeah, definitely. Yes. Yeah, and I realized that they are unique in their own way, but they're not too different from how um, everyone else is like in Malaysia. And I thought that it would be great if other people had the opportunity to go through a similar experience, to also learn from these communities and see how um, you know how wide the world actually is. Okay. And, yeah. So you mentioned just now that Native is actually a community uh, tourism mm. uh, based uh, social entrepreneurship. Uh, how does it work? Because uh, there's also this, what I would say, the Airbnb model, but I'm sure you, you operate differently. Maybe you can tell us a bit more about how does Native work in terms of uh, do you have ambassadors? How, 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 how do you build relationships with uh, the Orang Asli? Uh, how, how do you do that? So I think um, we initially started in that community in Semenye, which is close to where I studied. Okay. So that friendship has been long standing. So an entry point into that village was more of where um, there was the opportunity to do something on Airbnb experiences. So we really started with that. It was uh, me asking uh, our first host, which is, his name is Faisal, okay. at the time, whether he had any ideas about what we could do in his community. Okay. And they were linked directly to Hutan Rekrasi Sungai Tekala, okay. which is this vast, beautiful forest. And I said, yeah, maybe you can try taking people in. I think at the time he was thinking like, oh, Daniel wants to play around with this thing. Maybe let's just go let's with just, it. Let's just run with it. it. Yeah, let's just run with Faisal it. Faisal is uh, from which community exactly? And how, what do you find... Uh, what is the thing that you find unique about him and his community? Um, community as in his tribe? Yeah. So uh, Faizu is Temuan. Temuan. Yeah. So predominantly co communities in, the, in central Malaysia, especially mountainous regions, are Temuan. Yeah. And what is unique about um, his community? I, I think that's the thing that we are also trying to distinguish because um, in terms of Orang Asli or indigenous tourism, which is a very young industry in Malaysia, the challenge is that most Orang Asli communities seem like they are the same, especially like when they are the same tribe. So I think if you would ask me what is unique, I would say it's the people. 
So that way, every community is unique. We're trying to find that secret sauce that we can also showcase to the world. So I, I would say that in terms of Faisal, the relationships he holds, the forests that they have, so all of that make up like what makes them them. I see. So, so is, it, is it safe to say, because, because I've, I've dealt with Orang Asli before, and, I, and what, you, what you observe about them is pretty much similar to what I get. Basically, uh, even if you talk about Malay or Chinese, there's different. There's Hakka Chinese and Malays, there's also Bugis Malays. That, do, do you feel that, that Orang Asli, in a certain way, has a similar model? Um, yes, I would say so. But I would also say there's a lot of cultural mixing. So you can't really say that all Temuan people are the same. Like, uh, for example, I am Penang Hokkien, but a Hokkien Chinese person from Penang is super different from a Hokkien Chinese person from Singapore or from Johor. So I would, I would really like to see how we can acknowledge every community as unique. So, so I would say your, your native is looking at featuring at a very hyper-local, uh, individualistic kind of uh, culture, am I right? Uh, yes, yes, you could say that. And to go back to um, what we were speaking about, community-based tourism, is that we want to see how every individual can build together and join together to form like a communal identity. And I think um, to answer the question as well about how we are different. So we very much utilize Airbnb experiences at this point in time because I think it's a great platform, has great reach. Uh, but the way that we try to do it is we try to include as many people as possible. So although our um, Airbnb experience listing say, um, list me as the host, actually, but actually there are so many other community members that are behind the entire experience. And when we are on the ground, they are the stars of the show. I am the guy who carries the water. Okay. And, um, you and, do, you'll, you'll do the running around of yeah, sorts. Yeah, because, because I think the idea is really to give um, the Orang Asli a platform to speak. Okay. And I think many of our guests are always intrigued at how different the reality is to their perception. And I, I like to believe that they leave with a much more positive impression of the Orang Asli, which is very powerful. Yeah. So before we go to the break, uh, you, you mentioned Faizo. Mm -hmm. So I would say he's one of the host ambassador for Native. How many of Faisals do you have right now that you have partnered with so far as of this moment? Um, so we have worked with about 15 different individuals um, between 2018 and today. Okay. But I would say we have about six active um, hosts. Okay. Yeah. And, and, and where are they in, around Malaysia? Um, so, right now we, so right now we work um, exclusively in the Selangor area okay. because um, I think that's a resource constraint for us Yeah, because we prioritize um, working more deeply than widely. So when we confirm our model and we are ready to replicate, then we'll probably expand outward. Okay, I think we'll talk more about uh, the future of Native and the challenges of running a social entrepreneurship after the break. Stay tuned. <laughs> Welcome back to Notepad, I am Hafiz Mazuki and tonight we are speaking to founder of Native, a social enterprise, uh, Daniel Teo, who is also the recipient of the Singapore International Foundation Young Social Entrepreneurs YSE 2019, which carries with it, uh, I would say, a grant uh, worth uh, Singapore dollars 20,000. So Daniel, just now before the break, we were speaking about uh, Native and the nature of the business. But of course, I would like to delve more into the uh, the social entrepreneurship scene here in Malaysia. And before, before delving further into that, I would like you to relate or, or share with us uh, your experience in uh, Singapore International uh, Foundation Young Social Entrepreneurs Program. Maybe you can say uh, how, many, how many Malaysian representatives were there and, and what's your experience there been like? Sure. So I think um, YSE or the Young Social Entrepreneurs Program um, was a great experience. I think it brought together youth from all over the world, but mostly the ASEAN region. Okay. And I think in total, there were about maybe close to 10 Malaysian teams. Oh. I'm, I'm not too aware of the exact number uh, either. Yeah. Uh, so uh, I, I assume that you also have interactions with uh, representatives from other countries. And, and maybe you can share with us 
what 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 was, what was the experience interacting with them are, are they talking about the same issues uh, any idea that probably caught your eye mm. maybe you can tell Yep. So I think um, SIF, the Singapore International Foundation, does a great job at really facilitating the building of relationships, especially cross-cultural ones. Mm -hmm. So I think I met people from China who were working on very similar um, issues with indigenous people in China. Oh, but it's a different ball game. That's very big. Maybe you can <laughs> share more. <laughs> what, 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 what were they doing in China? Yeah, so I think for them, um, they, they were taking it up a notch for sure. I think they were a lot more experienced than we were. So it was really great to learn from them. So what they did is they partnered with communities and they immediately have a joint venture with them. So they would um, cover certain costs up front to turn like defunct infrastructure into more lively heritage-based um, attractions for tourists. So I think that was um, very interesting. I see. So, so winning the, I would say, I, would, I wouldn't say winning because you're one of the a six, few recipients, six recipients. Of, uh, of, the, of, the, of the award. Uh, what are you planning to do with that? How much of it goes back into investment? Are you talk, thinking about scaling up? W what are your thoughts? Yeah. So I think um, the $20,000 really gives us a good foundation to build our team. Because I, I've been very much like a big advocate for having a strong team before we proceed. Um, I think it will also enable us to work more actively with our local community partners, where we would be able to work with them to put together certain infrastructure that would be required to host uh, more efficiently and more effectively. Right now, how, how big is the team in uh, Native? So there are two of, two of us. Just two of you? Just oh two God. of us, yeah. <laughs> Just two how, of how, us. Uh, okay, so maybe you can share how, how do you run Native? Just the two of you. Who does what? Um, I would say like any general startup, when it's two people, you essentially, two of you do essentially everything. Every single thing. You're the HR, you're the accounts person, you're the, yes. <laughs> you're the CEO. Yeah, you're... But, we, but we do have our focuses. So my okay. co-founder's name is Sasha. Okay. So Sasha is very much like a branding, marketing person. He's also kind of like a small social media influencer, although I don't necessarily think she likes being called that. Okay. <laughs> yeah. But she, she does um, thrive in that kind of scene. So I think she definitely plays to her strengths in branding. And um, she also has a big heart for the community. So right now we work with two communities, one in Gomba and one in Semenye. Okay. So Sasha works more closely with the one in Gomba, while I work with the one in Semenye a bit more closely. So we can also strengthen that relationship and have a close point of view of each community. So coming back on, 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 on winning the grant, uh, do you, as a social entrepreneur, I believe this kind of program certainly uh, help the social entrepreneurs themselves. Uh, do you think in Malaysia there's enough of this going around or, or do you think there should be more, in your opinion? Um, I, I think the social enterprise scene has seen a lot more support, definitely. So uh, magic uh, and also the government has been actively trying to build the scene where there are some new policies about acknowledging uh, businesses and organisations as social enterprises, which entitles us to things like being listed in a directory, having certain tax breaks, which I feel like is a wonderful step forward. Um, I, I would say um, that the scene is definitely growing. Where, how, just exactly how much, I, I wouldn't be able to project that. But I think we are on a good trajectory. Although I would say the number of organizations that lend this kind of support are not as large as certain other countries. So I, I would definitely love to see more of that in the near future. Of course, when, when we are on the subject of, of growing the, the social entrepreneurship scene, uh, I would say there's a, it's not really a debate, but more to like a school of thought of whether you should incubate more people to start their social entrepreneurs or you should accelerate the good ones that are already in the market. Do you have an opinion on that? Mm. On, on where do you think, what would help you more as a social entrepreneur? Well, I, I think like incubation and acceleration are both important, where perhaps for incubation, it would be being able to reach a wide number of people so that even like someone who is just fresh out of high school has the opportunity to really test their ideas and become involved in making society better. While I feel acceleration needs to be a bit more um, careful because at that point you are probably investing a lot more resources so I think the thing about the Malaysian social enterprise scene is that it's small 
and many of the players, if you are maybe from five years ago, probably you are somewhat well known in the scene already. So I think those are the kind of organizations that would benefit a lot from acceleration. Well, I think Native is working our way towards that. And I would say that we would be ready for that by perhaps the end of the year. But at this point of time, I think incubation would have suit, would have helped us a lot, maybe like in the initial stages. In the initial stages. All right, we'll talk more about what Native has in store for its future right after this. Stay tuned. Welcome back to Notepad. I am Hafiz Manzuki, and tonight we are speaking to the uh, founder of Native, uh, Daniel Tio. Uh, Native is a social enterprise, and Daniel is also one of the recipients of the Singapore International Foundation Young Social Entrepreneurs YSE 2019, which carries with it a grant worth twenty thousand Singapore dollars. So, Daniel, uh, we, you, you spoke uh, before the break about where you would like to take Native, and I would like to explore more. Uh, what are your plans for the next year and the year, I mean, the year ahead? What, what are you planning to do with Native? Are you planning to scale up? Are you including more hosts or are you going to other states? Maybe you can share with us. Sure. So I think our biggest priority right now is to, of course, um, double down on the communities that we are already working with. So we would like to build uh, teams in each of these communities which can actively host guests and also uh, work together to build certain infrastructure. So Native, 20% um, of all our revenue from experience sales goes into a development fund for these communities, which then we use to construct things like um, guest houses, certain sanitation um, infrastructure, which we can be used for experiences, but also can be used by the community when we aren't having experiences. So we would like to see more um, success cases of that mechanism, which we're really testing out, and um, our first guest house should be complete by the end of the month. Okay, that's that's very that's very great to hear. Uh, but right now, uh, in terms of how how do how does uh, I would say a, a customer want to get that experience? Maybe you can share with us uh, what's the process. How do we? Is is it like go to a website or an app, or is it by telephone? How does it work for a customer today? if they would like to get an, uh, an experience, a tourism experience from Native, maybe you can share with us how, sure. what's the process? Yeah, I'm very appreciative that you <laughs> asked that question. <laughs> so you can find us on social media. Okay. So our handle is Discover Native. Um, so from there, you can inquire with us directly. There's also a link to our website there, which is discovernative.org. Okay. Yeah. And that will bring you to a link with, um, on Airbnb experiences, which you can directly book experiences with us. I see. Yeah. So right now we are being a little hacky about how we set up our booking processes. Okay. Um, but I think within the next few months, you'll see that our websites would have in-house booking and that should make the customer experience a lot better as well. I see. So I, I'm assuming that right now we, you're still uh, it's still, the customer will still have to go through Airbnb, but soon we'll have a separate website? Uh, yes, right? that's correct. We, we do have our own website, it's just that the booking feature is not ready yet. Okay. So okay. in the meantime, we are working with Airbnb. Okay, okay. before this, you, you, were, you, were, you spoke about there are two communities in Slago. Mm -hmm. are, are you looking at probably adding more communities in Slago, or are you probably going venturing off to Pahang? or maybe, you know, Johor, what, what are your thoughts? Yeah. So I think um, I, the way that I would envision it is that we would work with a community outside of Selangor now, um, because right now both that we work with are also, um, I wouldn't quite similar because they are Temuan tribes, but we would like to work with a different kind of community. So we can also showcase more of the diversity that exists within Malaysia in the Orangasli space. Okay, so well, maybe you can share with us when, when, when you speak to the Orang Asli or, or, or members of a tribe, uh, how do you convince them to be a partner uh, with Native? Mm. Well, I, I wouldn't say that we are looking to convince 
um, and you want to be our partner. Okay. But it's more of having a conversation and seeing whether we share similar goals. I see. So I think we would, and most of the, and based on our track record as well with the communities and the people that we have worked with, it's all mostly by invitation. So it's where I think. So they heard about you and they they contact you to work together. Yes. So most of the Orang Asli communities are hyper connected. So even though they may not necessarily be in active internet coverage, information spreads pretty quick. Yeah. So from there also, I, I believe that um, it's not too difficult to reach certain other communities. I, I think because they're a close-knit mouth. community, so, so it's easy. I mean, tr information travels between them very fast. Mm -hmm. right? Yeah, because I would, they are, they I are, would they are say close so. Knit. So uh, before, we, in, the, in the last two minutes that we have, maybe you can share with us your hopes and aspirations for Native uh, in the coming years? Yep. So I think Native's vision is really to see a more hospitable Malaysia as a whole, where communities are more hospitable, not just for visitors, but also for the people that are living there. And my dream is really to see um, a an, an community like the Orang Asli really own the experiences themselves. Where I, I am, so the thing is like, a lot of this also stems from where, a lot of times when I was younger, I felt like a tourist in my own country. Okay. Yeah, I'm from the town of Penang, but whenever I visit Penang again with friends from KL and they ask me places to show them, I have no idea where to bring them. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. I, I have the same problem as well. Yeah. Like, where's the best nasi kanda? It's suddenly like, oh, I didn't know there's a good place over yeah, here. Yeah, yeah. So I think I would like to see more people who don't feel like that, where an Orang Asi person or a Malaysian as a whole can be really proud and say, I know my country and this is the place, this is the thing that I want to show you. And if it's able to empower people to create their own livelihoods, then I think that is a truly powerful thing that I would like to see happen. All right, that's a truly uh, noble aspiration, Daniel. Thank you very much for sharing with us tonight. There you have it, uh, the founder of Native, Daniel Teo, uh, who is a recipient of the Singapore International Foundation Young Social Entrepreneurs, YAC 2019, speaking to me tonight, right here on Notepad. That's all the time we have. Uh, good night. Thanks for watching. Mm -hmm.